Dr. Jose Soriano uh, could join us. Uh, he's from Mexico uh, and he's one of the experts in endoscopic spine surgery. He will uh, tell his uh, uh, experience on uh, cervical uh, posterior tubular decompression for cervical spine stenosis. Yes, Jose. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mehmet. First of all, first of all I uh, hope you are well, everybody, in the middle of this terrible pandemic. In Mexico, we are in the worst moment, absolutely in the worst moment. The hospitals are exceeded, so uh, we are afraid about. So what uh, bless us. I'm going to talk about minimal invasive uh, cervical posterior decompression and cervical spondylotic myelopathy and uh, a very brief experience about it. This is my hospital, ABC Medical Center, Campus Santa Fe in Mexico City. It's a very small private hospital, but with uh, all kind of technology. I have not uh, one conflict of interest. And uh, DV could be summarized in this way. In the decision-making process, and agree with the evidence-based medicine, the posterior approaches for the cervical spondylotic uh, myelopathy are indicated in cases in which the compression is circumferential or posterior preferently. Uh, in patients with moderate to severe myelopathy, that is less than 12 in the modified Japanese orthopedic association scale. Uh, preferently when the patient is stable, but not necessary. Better when uh, we have uh, more than two levels of compression. We, when the comorbidity of the patients include uh, OPLL, osteoporosis, carotid disease, or previous surgeries, uh, in those cases, absolutely could be indicated the posterior approach. And uh, the, options, the options in those cases are uh, endoscopic techniques or microscopic techniques. I uh, prefer absolutely tubular microscope assisted techniques, including unilateral laminotomy with bilateral decompression hemilaminectomy or laminoplasty could be applied. Uh, in first place, it's very important to recognize that when we respect the midline RAFE, as was described in this important paper in the journal Neurosurgery Spine, we are essentially respecting the innervation of the third occipital nerve in avoiding the very painful condition that we teach the, the usual evolution in the posterior approaches. Also, when we go uh, in, uh, behind the, the rafe, midline rafe, we are preserving the ligaments. And it's very, very important because we are preserving also the contralateral side. The, the, the which stay intact, essentially, as you can see in this diagram. So uh, in this condition, we can maintain the stability and lordosis. That is the biomechanical issues of the cervical spine. The surgical position of the patient is crucial in these cases. And we usually use a Mayfield holder to maintain and modify the position of the neck properly, avoiding face and nice injury. A discrete semifowler could decrease the peridural venous turgor. Uh, it's very, very it's, it's important. Don't flex or extend because it's not necessary to prevent and notice damage of the spinal cord. It's, very, very important. 
a general endovenous anesthesia with propofol and fentanyl infusion, practically with that muscle relax relaxing set for intubation, could allow us a true input output neuromonitoring, which is absolutely mandatory in this kind of techniques. Are necessary fine tip instruments and tubular access system, and whatever you have, and uh, cures and long, uh, very microsurgical tools, match head rails. It's very important. Don't use uh, cutting a drill because the risk to to create a leakage. Or better, in the last times, I'm using a ultrasonic uh, scalpel uh, with the advantage to make at the same time hemostasis in the bone. The selection of the approach include the site of the worst compression or the site of the radiculopathy is very, very important. Uh, remember that in the past, we were using in all the cases a K wire uh, to then introduce the tubes by deletion. But now I can say absolutely, it's very important to avoid K wires and progressive blind dilation to don't chop the dura or worse, to don't chop the spinal cord. A better technique could be a progressive micro dissection following the direction of the muscle bundles, as you can see, included, including the different layers of the muscles, trapezius muscles, semispinalis services muscles, splenius services muscles, and multifidus. It's very easy, as I will show in the next slides, if you use a pen field and esophagus retractor and um, uh, micropolar with uh, those three instruments, it's very, very easy to complete this goal. As you can see in this uh, short video, the incision usually about two centimeters, we can dissect with the bipolar and so far, small esophagus retractors, as you can see, following the bundles and making hemostasis of the small vessels to maintain clean the anatomical layers, the surgical plane, because it's very easy. And we can take advantage of the esophageal retractors to, uh, to dock the tubes and to maintain very clean the bone plane, as you can see in this picture. Once you have the, the bone plane, we can drill following the landmarks, anatomical landmarks, in this very, very, very easy way. So the learning curve is very important. You have to, to learn at the first to use all kind of the instrument, but they are very, very small tubes, diameter in about 10 to uh, 20 millimeters, all depending of the number of levels to be operated. So the surgical landmarks are very easy to identify. The first one is the interlaminar space. The next one is the laminofacet junction, as you can see, docking the tube uh, about two thirds over the superior lamina and one third over the inferior lamina. Because with this position, we can achieve the flavum insertions. And uh, we have the possibility to wind the tube in craniocaudal or medial lateral way to wind our field of action, as you can see in this uh, diagram. So 
uh, the tube offers a white surgical action field. The tube doesn't limit us our uh, action over the uh, goals. The key goal is absolutely the spark detention band and complete the flower resection to make a very good decompression. Uh, the first, once we identify the bone plan, the next step is to drill the bone until identify the limits of the flavum ligament, as you can see perfectly, the superior and inferior limits. And it's uh, very practical and very useful to be sure that the, the compression has been completed. You can see the limits of the flavum. Sometimes we uh, find the scars behind the flower. That's the reason why it's very important to uh, complete the resection of the flower. This is a uh, one case with a very, very important compression, one level to see the position. The two was 10 millimeters, medial can caudal, uh, very easy to identify, following the step by step, as you can see. And at the end, with the flower resection, we have the possibility to, to till the table also to complete the contralateral side of resection. The hemostasis is very important and uh, I highlight this, don't use too much bipolar. It's not necessary. We have to be patient, only a little bit at the path. Some minutes is enough to make a good hemostasis. In the most of the cases, we don't use bipolar or anything to make hemostasis. It's not necessary. And you can see here the preservation of the muscles perfectly at the end and a very good decompression with the complete resection of the flower. So you can see the window of the bone respecting more than 50% of the facet joints to don't create instability in a very good clinical evolution, the, which is the most important reason to make this kind of procedures, the good immediate postoperative evolution. This is another case with a multi-level compression, not only a spinal cord compression, but also some uh, levels of a radicular compression. So this is a good example to show how it's possible to make multi-level spine procedures, including laminotomies, laminectomies, or foraminotomies, whatever you need to to complete the goals. This is again and again the same issue. The sonopet is very important tool to complete the uh, foramen of the compression. With the sonopet, I uh, have accelerated the times, absolutely. It's very, very easy because uh, the way of the tools facilitate the completion of this kind of procedures. You can see a little bit uh, Litene getting uh, better the monitoring during the surgery, the decompression of the foramina and laminotomies combine it. Uh, and this is another case just to show a laminectomy. You can see a multi-level compression in a very rigid spine, stable spine, the patient confined to wheelchair. You can see again and again, the position, don't flex, don't extend, it's not necessary. This muscle dissection following the bundles, landmark identification, Flavum resection, identifying the superior and inferior limits, 
tilting the table sometimes when it's necessary and uh, in uh, making a very, very nice and wide decompression using two hands, three-dimensional vision, high definition, preserving the muscles and completing the goals of the minimal invasive procedures. And you can see three levels of laminectomy, preserving the lordosis and the stability of the spine, and preserving the rafe in this post in with a very nice post-op evolution. We report these preliminary group of patients uh, with Roger Hartland and, and his group with excellent uh, results. Me pre and post-op bus from six to one and NDI from 46 to seven respectively. So nice results. Another possible technique could be the open door laminoplasty. It's a very complex uh, procedure that was described by Michael Wan, the feasibility by MIS. And then we report this uh, paper in the literature uh, highlighting how to make this important procedure. Starting by the uh, uh, short laminotomy and then the hinge, et cetera, et cetera, level by level. This is a 71 years old woman, long history of progressive cervical axial pain with radiation to the left side, myeloradiculopathy and super motoneuron syndrome, MGOA six, and you can see a very rigid spine again, but with uh, anterior subluxation, C5, C6. Multilevel important compression, basically from C3 to C7, and uh, different sequences of the MRI, just to make the important compression, especially and C34 and C56, when uh, intensity change in the MRI, as you can see. Uh, so the normal bone density was normal and the surgical challenges were to make a good decompression to preserve improved neurological status to stabilize C5, C6, avoiding a very painful post-op condition, all of them by tubular approach. And you can see uh, in this uh, short video, the last video, how we can identify again the muscles, the position, etc. And uh, at the beginning, we make the holes of the facet the screws to avoid the risk of some kind of danger deviation of the same. And then the hinge with the, the ultrasound the scalpel in a very fine way. And at the end, the plates to make the laminoplasty. As you can see, two incisions, two centimeters, and the best is the, the immediate evolution of the patient. So you can see here the, the widening of the canal. Very impressive widening and the patient getting better until 15 in the MJOA. And you can see in the, the evolution in the time when uh, preserving the, the widening and, and the fusion of the hinge, et cetera, et cetera. In summary, in conclusions, the posterior microsurgical tubular approaches are useful to solve uni or multilevel spondylotic myelopathy the goal must be to complete the main objective and agree with the universal, universal guidelines of the EVM, EVM, but minimizing the iatrogenic damage. The feasibility depends on the interest to learn the skills and the good disposition to get a slow learning cure. The understanding of the step-by-step -step could facilitate the shortening of the learning cure. The knowledge of the possible complications could help to avoid them 
and it's mandatory to accumulate casuistics to analyze results to understand the true clinical impact of these techniques. But the most important, absolutely, and I had to mention to end this uh, talk, is the clinical, the clinical uh, situation of the patient. This is the patient 12 hours after the surgery with a multilevel laminoplastis. And you can see how the patient is absolutely better and with minimal pain in the immediate postoperative. Thank you so much, Mehmet. Thank you so much for everybody. I hope you uh, are well in medium of this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Great talk. Yeah, very interesting uh, approach. Are there questions from, from participants? Salman? I think uh, Jose, as always, uh, a brilliant talk. Really enjoyed that. I think the videos were very self explanatory. I really enjoyed that. And it's good to see you Thank healthy you. and well. And uh, please take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother, Salman. Thank you.